33%. 33% approval, folks. A new low for Joe Biden. Guess what? That's Quinnipiac poll. That's all voters. I can't remember a lower poll for a president in my lifetime. It's been over a year since Obama's third presidential term kicked off and false promises were made. Promises of prosperity and unity, crime, inflation, borders. This administration has destroyed all three of those things and then some, 8.5%. That number is a death knell for this party. Game over. But if it were just inflation at that level, it may not be enough. But that's not all, folks. Lingering pandemic restrictions. Americans are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Illegal immigration. It's absolutely petrifying to imagine this. But in March, we saw more than 217,000 apprehensions at our border. Nearly 67,000 got away. That's nearly 300,000 at our border in a month, and a cold weather month to boot. I can't wait to see those high water marks this summer, the summer months, free passes for illegals. The Biden administration is acting as a travel agency specializing in South and Central American incomers. And now, in case it was ever a question, now Joe Biden has made very sure that number will skyrocket. skyrocket. That number will rise next month after Biden nixed Title 42, the rule that allowed border guards to turn people away on pandemic grounds. We're nearly 15 months into this White House. Let me ask you this. Do you feel safe when you leave your home? Do you feel like you have enough money in your pocket to make ends meet? Do you feel like the leaders of this country are really looking out for Americans for you? Our country is being ripped to shreds by rampant crime, bloody and vicious crime across our country from coast to shining coast in all of our cities. And do you know how many times Joe Biden, the supposed leader of this country, actually mentioned the word crime in his State of the Union address just a couple of weeks ago? Once. Just one time, Joe Biden mentioned crime just once in his State of the Union speech. Quote, let's not abandon our streets, he said. But that's exactly what he's done and exactly what leaders in blue cities and states across the country have done. They've abandoned Americans, left us to fear for our lives on the streets. And in the same breath, Joe Biden said that we need to hold law enforcement accountable. Hmm. What about holding criminals accountable, Joe? If you just open your eyes and look, listen, we're letting career criminals out on our streets, free to loot, vandalize, assault, rape, and murder again and again. We have woke prosecutors who demand the criminal elements' rights are protected so that they can go free and suck our rights out from under us. Average citizens just looking to make a living, take home a paycheck, and take the family out to dinner. We're being assaulted on the streets while we sit at a cafe in bars and in our businesses. It's a war on America out there, and the leftists running the show are failing upwards. Speaking of failing upwards, where is Joe Biden? Where's Kamala Harris? How about you, Pelosi, Schumer? Why aren't any real solutions being offered? Where are the press conferences and speeches about how to fix one of the biggest crime surges in our country's history? Well, crime and public safety is about to play its most significant role in our politics since the mid-1990s. Donald Trump made law enforcement, law and order, a defining issue in both of his presidential campaigns, while the left worried about which bathroom people should use. Donald Trump and the Republican Party stood firm on their promise and their demand that Americans feel safe. But now, over a year into one of the most serious crime waves in our history, Democrats should beware. The rise in violence in Democrat-run cities will hurt you all. They've done nothing, nothing about it to stop it. Correction, in another shining example of learning nothing at all from the past, Obama, I mean Biden, has a brilliant little idea. He's coming after your guns at a time when you feel the most unsafe you've ever felt. The most historically unpopular president ever now, a man facing an electoral wipeout in seven months, coming down to the home stretch, Biden knows and wants, now wants to pick a fight over gun control, mm, an issue that Democrats have been losing politically for years. Good luck with that. Americans need self-protection now more than ever, thanks to leftist policies. But sure, let's try gun control thing. Eh, try it again. And just when you think the midterms couldn't get worse for Democrats, up pop two of the most useless purveyors of strategic advice you can possibly imagine, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. Now, you remember Hillary, right? 
respect. With all due respect, the fact is we had four dead Americans. Was it I because understand. of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? Mm, mm, mm. Career killer. That Hillary Benghazi Hill. Hillary Clinton, sadly, still considered to be one of the party's shining beacons of hope. I could barely get that line out with a straight face. Well, she just doesn't get why we're not fawning over her guy, Joe Biden. From my perspective, uh, President Biden is doing uh, a very good job. I think that his handling of Ukraine, uh, passing the American Rescue Package, Mm -hmm. the huge infrastructure package. I'm not quite sure what the disconnect is between the accomplishments of the administration and this Congress and the understanding of what's been done. I'm not sure what you're looking at, Hillary. Simply put, the disconnect is this. There is absolutely Zero connection between anything good happening in this country and this administration. The Democrats are completely disconnected from reality and from policies that are good for Americans. And Barack Obama, last week visiting a White House he so clearly still wants and controls, said that Democrats have, quote, story, a story to tell and just have to tell it. Well, how about I'll tell you a story? It's the real story. And it's this. It's the economy, stupid. That famous political catchphrase coined by Bill Clinton's advisor, James Carville, elections are won and lost on the economy. And right now, Americans are hurting. While the Democrats distract you by dangling a 4.5% rise in wages, how does it help Americans to see wages rise by 4.5% when inflation is up by 8.5%? And what about the millions of Americans who are either retired or on fixed income? They're treated to that 8 and a half percent rise in prices eating away at their savings, but they don't get that relief of less than stellar and temporary wage rises. The dirty little secret the Democrats won't tell you is the wage rise, well, that's transitory. Inflation ripping and not going anywhere anytime soon, that's not so transitory. More Dems failing up. And speaking of Dems failing up, All they do is distract Americans, but the true story is still this. It's the economy, stupid, and you're failing at it, Joe Biden. No common sense. And you will be surprised at how much amazing (laughs) success you will have, as opposed to what's going to have happen, which is they're going to get their kicked in November. Mm -hmm. A little too late, I would say. The usually GOP bashing liberal Bill Maher says that even he may have a tipping point to cross over to the Republican Party. Come on over, Bill. The water's warm. And who can blame him? And in his State of the Union speech in February, Joe Biden spent a lot more time talking about Ukraine's borders than our own borders. And in his very brief mention of it during one of the biggest border crisis moments in our country's history, he talked more about securing South and Central American borders than his own border, our border. And yet this party seems to welcome illegal migrants in and they're taking selfies at the border, bragging about how easy it is to make it into this country. After Texas Governor Greg Abbott sent migrants to D.C. in a bus, Jen Psaki bombed it. Psaki bomb said this. Thank you. These are all migrants who have been processed by CBP and are free to travel. So it's nice the state of Texas is helping them get to their final destination as they await in their, their outcome of their immigration proceedings. And they're all in immigration proceedings. Nice. <laughs> Come on. They're illegal. They broke the law. They're not even hiding it anymore, these dams. Not only are these people welcome here, but they can go wherever they like. The left's desperate attempt to distract Americans from their failures at the border, falsely accusing border agents of whipping illegal migrants in Del Rio while they got cleared today. They were slandered by Joe Biden. They were slandered by Homeland Security Chief Alejandro Mayorkas. And the whole episode was played up with the sole purpose of distracting Americans from the poorest borders and bad policies. And in case you forgot, because who could forget the moment when Kamala Harris doubled down on slamming those border agents, tying in what else? Racism. Human beings should not be treated that way. And as we all know, it also evoked images of some of the worst moments of our history where that kind of behavior has been used against the indigenous people of our country, has been used against African-Americans during times of slavery. Except they're wrong. And by the way, that's rich. The Biden administration calling our border agents racist. They're not. Want to hear some real racist comments? 
You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. To fully, I'm not joking. Unlike the African-American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community. Mainstream African-American? Yeah. Who is articulate and bright and, and, and clean and nice-looking guy? If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. So where is the apology for smearing the reputations of those border agents that way? Americans cannot, should not, and will not forget these moments when they vote come November. And don't think this nightmare isn't lurking around the leftist corner. A collective groan could be heard on Monday when Philadelphia said it was reinstating the city's mask mandate. Another Another bad omen for Democrats. All signs point to this. The Democrats are at a point of no return. They and they show absolutely no sign at all of trying to reverse it. A party that was already facing a highly probable defeat in this November's midterm elections, I predict, will actually be a wipeout. And guess who agrees with me? This blend is called E15. And because it requires less crude oil, it can cost 10 cents per gallon less on average, 16 gallons in a tank of gas, average national price of, that comes out to, yeah, still not enough to save the Democrats in the midterms. Hey, Colbert, you picked him. You picked that guy. You suck at picking a president. You suck at dancing. Well, there may be hope for you yet. There might be some hope for an America in about seven months, but stick to the comedy. You kind of suck at that too, to be honest with you.